welcome everyone to this uh, virtual worship service being held at Detroit Lakes United Methodist Church. This service was made uh, around the 22nd of March. There are about six people in the congregation and our great thanks to Nick who is recording this and setting up the environment for us to do this. We also have Liz Harmon with us. We have Paul on the piano playing beautifully. Rick Peckman and Gary and I are here and we welcome you to join us each and every week. This will be on our website and we'll continually add to our website until we're able to not worship virtually, but instead face to face. I look forward to that in the days to come. Let us open our time with prayer. Thank you for your presence, for the communion of saints, for those worshiping online, for one another, and for this unique occasion. We know that nothing can separate us from your great love. In gratitude for that knowledge, we now gather, separate from one another, but united in you. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face. A story for all ages. In our scripture today, we're going to find out how a father and son, well, the struggles they have. In my story, Just Me and My Dad by Mercer Mayer, we're going to see how God provides understanding, patience, and of course, love for the father and son in this story. Just Me and My Dad by Mercer Mayer. We went camping, just me and my dad. Dad drove because I'm too little. I picked the campsite, but someone was already living there, so I gave it back. We found another campsite nearby. My dad was tired, so I pitched the tent understanding and patience. We made a campfire. I found the wood and my dad lit the fire. 
I wanted to take my dad for a ride in our canoe, but I launched it maybe just a little too hard. <laughs> we went fishing instead. Whoa, Dad! My dad took a snapshot of the fish we caught. Then I cooked dinner for me and my dad. Hey! We had eggs instead. After dinner, I told my dad a ghost story. Boy, did he get scared. I gave my dad a big hug that made him feel better. Then we went to bed. I stayed up with my dad and let him read me stories. We slept in our tent all night long, just me and my dad. God provides understanding, patience, and love. Just me and my dad by Mercer Mayer. Our Bible lesson today from, is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, beginning with verse 25. Here are these words as I read them to you. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Here ends the reading from God's holy word. May these words become to us the word of God. Would you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of the hearts of each of these, your people, be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Let's be clear on this point from the outset. The elder son is a good guy. Even though the elder son appears unsympathetic and is treated unsympathetically in this story, he is not a villain. The elder son is the dutiful son, the righteous one, even the moral one. If there is a bad guy here, it's that younger son. The younger son who talked the old man into splitting up the farm. The younger man who abandoned them. The younger son about whom they last heard rumors of wild and immoral living off in that far country. And here the younger son comes crawling back. How do you expect the good son to react to that news. Take a look at the way Rembrandt portrayed the elder son in his painting. In the full painting, that's the elder son standing to the right. His face is bathed in the same light as that of the, of the father and the younger son. He's wearing the same rich red robe as his father. He appears to be standing on a ledge or a platform of some sort. It's as if Rembrandt is saying, look at this man. He's standing on the high moral ground. But 
notice something else. It also means that he's looking down at his brother. When the elder son returns from a hot, hard day in the fields, hears the news that his younger brother has returned and their father is throwing him a party back at the house, we observe his honest reaction. Take a look at the close-up detail of the elder son's face as Rembrandt captured it. I see there a mixture of dumbstruck and contempt. Hear what the elder son says. Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours not my brother, but your son, who has devoured your property with prostitutes. You killed the fatted calf for him. That is a less than gracious response. In fact, it's downright ugly. But I've got to feel for that guy. I feel for him because I've been there, standing with the elder son, Outraged that some delinquent appears to be conning their way back into the good graces of those who count. While my good behavior and good work goes unrecognized and unrewarded. Have you ever felt that way? Constantly taking the high road is hard. It's not always satisfying. The elder son found he just couldn't do it that day, take the high road. He was too shocked by the unfairness of the situation. He had always worked hard, obeyed the rules, respected his father. His brother did the opposite, and the little schmuck got the party. What vicious irony. Yet even more of an irony is when we realize that this elder son is just as lost in his own far country as the younger son ever was. The younger son had cut himself off from every important relationship by prematurely demanding his inheritance and leaving to find his own way in the world. The older son was now in danger of cutting himself off from those same relationships out of pride, self-righteousness, a false sense of being a victim, and a general lack of graciousness. We're going to leave the older son there today, standing outside, listening to the party raging indoors, fuming to himself. Next week, when we regather here online, we're going to be reminded that the father who said, let's kill the fatted calf to celebrate the return of my son, is the same who says to the older son, all that is mine is yours. Always in our worship services, we share joys and concerns, and one of the concerns, of course, are all the many people throughout the world who have uh, contracted, uh, contacted with um, uh, COVID-19, and also who have loved ones who have died. Please remember to uh, safe distance yourself from others. Six feet is the recommended distance. And nestle in, in your home as much as you can reminding yourself that safety comes when we care for others by doing these things. There are additional persons that we want to mention this morning who have encountered other issues in their lives. Uh, Please remember Nancy Sunby and her family, Pastor Brenda and Tom, Ken Groniga and his family, Betty Welsh, Jan Campbell, 
Ellie Brown and her family, the Scully family. In addition, two of our members have lost loved ones this past week, and they include Steve Quam, whose brother passed away, and Chris Kendall, who had a death of an uncle. If there are other joys or concerns that you want us to know about, please share them with us uh, either through email or by telephoning us. The telephone in the office is being answered by our secretary, Ellen. It is being forwarded to her home often. We thank you for sharing and continuing our community of faith as much as we can during this time apart. And now will you bow your heads with me at home and let us pray together. Compassionate God, your Christ wept for the people because of the hardness of hearts. Warm our hearts with your love so that we might care deeply for the people of our nation and our world. Transform our caring into bread for the hungry, healing for the sick, and hope for those who hunger and thirst after justice to the glory of your name. We pray, O oh Lord, this day for the fragile, for the poor, for the anxious, for shut-ins who are lonely, for the grieving. We also pray for those who are among our first responders to illness, those who are in hospitals and clinics, those who are assessing needs over the telephone, those who work with fire departments or ambulance crews or other early responders. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will keep them safe Provide personal protection equipment and things like respirators and ventilators. We pray also for our leaders throughout the world, in our states, and also our bishops and superintendents who are guiding our response. Guide us safely in the days ahead, we pray. Teach us never to doubt your love, but always to trust in you through the grace of Jesus Christ. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. During our announcement time, um, during these uh, virtual worship services, we invite you to really play, pay close attention to the announcements that one of our staff members, Elisa, sends out on a weekly basis. Please also remember that today is one great hour of sharing. And if you would like to give a gift, you can send that to the church office. Mark it, please, as one great hour of sharing, or put it in one of the envelopes that were distributed to you in previous weeks. The one great hour of sharing allows us, because it pays for administrative costs of our general church UMCOR team, which is a very small team, it allows us to be able to give every donation during times of tragedy to that disaster. We ask that you consider that this day. UMCOR receives no general church funding. In addition, we ask that you would remember your church. Gifts can be sent to uh, the church office. Mail will be checked regularly. Or you may go to our website and follow the, the commands there to give online. We provide funds for many different missions as well as the operation of this congregation. We trust that you will remember both. At this time, we're going to hear from Liz Harmon and Paul as they sing together softly and tenderly. Please pay attention to the phrase, come home.
Go into the world in faith, trusting in God to lead you, trusting people to receive you. Go into the world with hope, with God's presence before you and dreams to carry on. Go into the world with love, serving with those in whom Christ lives and laboring for those for whom Jesus died. Go in faith, in hope, and love. And may the grace of Jesus Christ go before you. Amen.